the lives of innocent civilians are sacrificed in the wars of their masters. Yes, in Ukraine, but not only. Since the last plenary, tens of thousands of Afghani citizens have been forced to flee in search of food and safety. Five million children face famine, an agonizing and painful death, a 500% increase in child marriages and children being sold just so they can survive, and not a mention of it. Not here, not anywhere. No wall-to-wall -wall TV coverage, no emergency humanitarian response, no special plenaries, not even a mention in this plenary, no Afghani delegations and no statements. My God, they must be wondering what makes their humanitarian crisis so unimportant? Is it the colour of their skin? Is it that yes. they're not white? They're not European? Yes. That yes. their problems come from a US gun yes. or a US invasion? Is it that the decision to rob their country's wealth was taken by a despotic yes. US president rather than a Russian yeah. one? Because, my God, all wars are evil and all victims deserve support. And until we get on that page... And the fucking dumbasses will turn around and be like, she's doing all lives matter here, sweaty. Are you insane? Oh, dude, yeah. They love standing with Ukraine. Wait till they want to... They wait, You know, wait, just wait. It's already dying down. People don't give a shit about Ukraine. Chapo live show segment about... As long as, as, long as we're talking about current events, I gotta, I gotta say... There, there's a there's like like any time a war happens like we all remember what it was like when this country did the war in Iraq and it was like if you questioned it you were like objectively on the, you were all you're on the side of the terrorists. There are so many people that are thrilled right now that another country of comparable size and military might to America is doing their own version of the Iraq war and like a completely unjustified invasion of another country because it allows them to just be like. Okay, we can. America's the good guy now, right? <laughs> we're the good guy because Russia's the bad guy, and you have to say Russia's the bad guy, and that invalidates everything that America has done leading up to this. Right. And it's like, why can't you just condemn Putin? Why can't you just condemn Putin? Well, it's like, okay, I do. Fine, I condemn my own government, but it does fuck all. What is it going to do for Russia? <laughs> no, but like, I just like you should. You should never let people be like like bully you into thinking that you have to take this like sort of imaginary reasonable position. It's like why can't you just do this one thing? Well, if you let people push you around by that, like it's never going to be good enough for them. It's never going to be good enough. And if like it, it, what they want you to do is just support an escalation of this war, which I'm sorry, I'm not going to, and no one should. Even it doesn't matter if you say. Hassan, you've literally said this before. Yeah, I, I mean, well. The Chapo boys and I are, are good friends, and uh, I love them, and I think their takes are good. You know, we sometimes have disagreements, rarely, but... You are against the invasion, as virtually everyone I know has. They're going to act like you didn't say it so they can keep fucking talking. Because <laughs> Which is pr pretty funny. Like, I mean, Felix knows. Like, he sees the fucking uh, treatment that I get, the ass-blasting uh, treatment that I get from fucking all these, like, psychos on the internet. Like, literally, there is just like, I, I've, it doesn't matter. I have a Putin is very bad Ukraine fucking sign. I could literally just be like, dude, I, I could do call to arms, like an international, I could follow the international call to arms and like go to fucking Mariupol and they would still be like, dude, you're not doing enough. You didn't kill enough Russians. Like, what the fuck? It's very clear that you just, you know, it's very clear that you are your allegiance. Because the moment I turn around and say, hey, this is literally fucking like insane what is happening here is fucking insane they're they're still going to turn around and be like well that's unacceptable sweaty um your tweets should absolutely reflect the the unconditional support for nuclear war you'll be side by side with some interesting patches and armbands yeah i mean that too they are so excited to have a war like this where america is not in their minds, one of the bad guys. Subscribe for six months. No Even matter though, what, you cannot jump him, when they tell you to fucking jump. Right and in five years, when some Frankenstein collection of right-wing militias is terrorizing Ukraine just like it has, using our weapons, and they pretend like they weren't riding this fucking wave, you better remember. Putin bad Ukraine good. Your delivery gives off the impression that you're only saying it to appease the chat. When you say this, again, you are literally proving what they're talking about here. It's not enough that you say that obviously it's fucking completely unjustifiable to invade a country and bomb their residential buildings. Okay? Like, it's not enough. But 
even then it's like your delivery makes it seem like you're fake. What can I do? I've raised money. Like, I don't have to appease you. you. I don't have to appease you. I don't have to do any of these things. I do it because I believe in it. And yet these self-important psychopaths uh, who get horned up by That's their fun. like uh, YouTube daddies who, who tell them that like I'm bad and they go to their fucking subreddits and like uh, reinforce those, uh, uh, th those values will literally fucking no matter what say that I am not uh, doing enough. I am never doing enough. It's never going to happen. You can tone police me all you want. You can suck my dick too. Well, now let's move on to the TV pilot we wrote for you guys tonight. <laughs> anyway, that was a that was a really good take by them. No, it's like I, like and also like yeah, Putin's a bad guy, but like we like he's probably he's in power largely because of this fucking country. Yeah. Like we literally chose him to fucking like he was he, he was our guy. So like I mean. It, like it, 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 the fact that Russia is doing something uh, that's very similar to what this country does all the fucking time does not fucking get all the people who supported the Iraq War off the hook. And this is what they really think and want now. I learned it from watching you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they want because they've, they've been they've been tired of like this is why there's all these articles now about like the left's Putin problem. It's because these people have had to spend the last 16 years taking it on the chin because they because we because you know like if you were against the Iraq War you can you, you can hold that over them. And I feel like these guys just hated the U.S. on the good side. Now the United States is not and never will be on the good side since World War II. That's it. That's the last time the United States was on the good side of anything. It is literally there is no side that the United States enters a conflict without looking for an opportunity for themselves. If you think that nations engage in actions because they're purely evil or purely good, you are a dumbass. And when I say this, people get very upset at me. They say, Hassan, why can't you use like uh, less spicy language? You kept calling us a dumbass over and over again for uh, in the lead up to the Ukrainian invasion. And that really hurt my fucking feelings. But it's true. You're, you think like life is a Marvel movie. It's incredibly stupid. There is no good side or bad side. But if you want to apply good side, bad side, if you want to apply moralistic values to fucking foreign policy and international relations, then America is, no matter what side they're at, the bad side. No matter. No matter what. It's crazy. It's crazy to think that, like, America is the good side in this, dude. What do you mean? America could literally fucking stop this tomorrow if they wanted. I'm going to be honest. They could stop this tomorrow. They have all of the power. We are so incredibly, we are so incredibly powerful. It is like impossible for you to comprehend. NATO is our invention. The Marshall Plan side by side with NATO is our invention to turn the entirety of the European Union into a fucking client state. It's a consortium of client states to work at our behest. We rebuilt Western Europe specifically so we could control mouth. it. And we could utilize it in the Cold War against Russia against the USSR so that capitalism could fucking win. And it did. We won. We as Americans, we won. Capitalism won, okay? The reason why I say fucking we in this situation is because I need people to understand that I am still in America. I'm an American citizen, okay? All of that matters. Every, every part of that process throughout history fucking matters. And that's precisely why. United, the United States had every opportunity to put an end to in this. Ireland, using but instead, man, we are fed this idea that, like, Putin is a fucking madman who just, like, wants to destroy... He wants to genocide Ukraine. He wants to genocide Ukraine. He wants to genocide Ukraine. And that could be true. Maybe it's neutral. fucking true. But that should never stop us from trying to at least exhaust diplomatic options. I'm even conceding on that front to all of you. I'm conceding on that front and telling you, even if it is true that he's a genocidal madman, you turn around and you say, that's appeasement, that's appeasement, that's appeasement. Dog, what we're doing currently is appeasement. What we're doing currently in this very moment is appeasement. We're not in war. There is no World War III. The opposite of appeasement is World War III in a nuclear, in a global nuclear World War III, which means, you know, nuclear holocaust. Didn't Turkey try that in Antalya? Dude, are you fucking, oh, come on, Turks. You think Turkey has any fucking power? Come on. Come on, bro. There's one country that has power. It's not France. It's not Germany. They've already tried. It's the United States of America. 
You can thank the administration for letting the Ukrainian people die without intervention. Yeah, any any fucking any death at the hands of the violent fucking Russian military forces does not have equal responsibility, but still bears responsibility within the State Department's attitude towards Russia and their lack of interest in fucking uh, uh, trying to put an end to this. And instead using Ukraine like Afghanistan, which they literally fucking openly state they're doing. When I say it, you say I'm a tanky. When Hillary Clinton says it, though, she's openly admitting to it. What do you think about Erdogan meeting the president of Israel? It's not surprising. I know that like Turks are uh, mad because of Mami Marmara, understandably so. Where Israel famously fucking drop shipped into a fucking uh, in, into a humanitarian mission ship going into Gaza and literally murked every single fucking Turk there, including one Turkish American citizen, as a matter of fact. Ten, ten humanitarian activists were fucking murdered by the IDF. There's videos of it if you ever want to watch it. It's fucking gruesome. It's disgusting. Back in 2010. Israeli forces stormed at least one ship attempting to break the blockade of Gaza. Commanders lowered themselves from the helicopters and onto the Mavi Marmara. That's the lead ship in a flotilla of six vessels which are carrying aid for the Palestinian territory. We can confirm that at least two people have been killed and more than 30 have been injured. Israeli radio is reporting the death toll may be as high as 16 people. Well, our reporter on board the ship sent this report before communications were cut. The organizers on board the Mavi Marmara, after two people have been confirmed killed by the Israeli army, have now asked all the passengers to go inside. They've raised the white flag. Um, this after Israeli commandos descended upon the ship in international water uh, uh, from a helicopter, as well as surrounded it. Uh, by vessels uh, from all sides. Uh, tens of people, civilians, have been injured. There are still sounds of live fire despite the white flag being raised. Um, tens of people have been injured. Two people have been killed on board the ship, uh, which holds 600 uh, activists, parliamentarians, women, children, and the elderly, all of whom are civilians. Organizers have asked everyone to go inside. Uh, so this is where we shall head. Jamal Al Shayal Al Jazeera on board the Mavi Marmara in international waters of the Mediterranean Sea. The Mavi Marmara disaster, where they straight up helicoptered in to a fucking humanitarian mission into Gaza that was bringing in supplies to the people of Gaza, and they murdered every Turk, and then they put Love their you, fucking man. quote unquote guns. That was the most disgusting shit, dude. I mean, it was a little act of terror. Like, it was just straight another, what else is new? The IDF is a terrorist organization. They do terror every fucking day. Not surprising. But uh, they, they, look, they put their fucking guns. They, they put the guns they that they found on the ship. It was literally like butter knives and, and fucking, you know, like a, like a fire axe. You know what I mean? Not a single gun on the ship. You can, yeah, you can find the videos. You can watch them shoot unarmed people from their helicopter, which they roped into a humanitarian ship and murdered, mercilessly executed 10 Turkish people. Anyway, yeah, the Gaza Flotilla Raid, Mavi Marmara is the name of the ship. International law, baby. What's up? International law, right? You said the USA could end this war tomorrow. How? Literally concessions, negotiation exhausting the diplomatic opportunities uh, and, and giving Russia an out, an exit ramp. Giving Russia an exit ramp. Dude, we can't get our own people to wear a mask or get a free shot. This is big, this big bad conspiracy stuff is nonsense. Dude, America has the biggest fucking dick at the table still, okay? It's gotten a little bit smaller. It's getting colder out there. So your, America's penis is shriveling a little bit. Yeah, baby, let's go. Because the Chinese penis is coming. But ultimately, it still has the biggest dick. It's not a fucking big, bad conspiracy. Stop washing away literally 100 years of fucking uh, international relations that has been carefully crafted, conducted, and done specifically so that like uh, a, a global capitalist hegemony could exist with America at the fucking imperial throne. How do liberals justify Israel's actions, America's actions, and the lack of condemnation for America in a similar capacity to the uh, to the understandable and desirable condemnations towards Russia for the exact same actions. How? I, I would even go so far as to say there's more justifiable. It's still unjustifiable regardless, but at least one is in your fucking backyard. The other one is literally, you know, tens of thousands of miles away. How 
Has the world not fucking gotten together and said, America, what the fuck are you doing? You can't invade Iraq. That's unacceptable. We're going to sanction you. How? Explain to me how, if this is a big global conspiracy. We're, or maybe, maybe it's just not a global conspiracy at all. It's just out and about in the open. American libs are the biggest nationalists and Western supremacists when it comes to geopolitics. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. fucking lutely It's wild to just like hand wave away hundreds of years of fucking foreign policy, okay, and international relations and, and, uh, and, and also global capitalism at, for a brief moment to just like defend, oh, little America, we can't even get people to wear masks. Come on, we can't do any domestic policy. Yeah, it doesn't matter because the State Department is in unison, okay? That is a fist. Our corporations and our capital owners work side by side with our State Department. That is, that, there's always bipartisan consensus when it comes to American imperialism. Do you think that that is an accident? There's like one person that fucking voted against uh, invading uh, Afghanistan. One person in Congress. That's it. One. One. You're going to fucking tell me that that's a conspiracy? It's America has no power. America has no power. It's just an accident that Nancy Pelosi was clapping when Juan Guaido was being put up as, uh, as the real... Yeah, it should be installed as the wheel weedle of Venezuela. When Donald Trump, who's the big bad Nazi. No, it wasn't Bernie. No, it wasn't. It's just like, what, what, how did this happen? America is now a small bean. That, that's it? Small bean politics in mad. America? But you know what is no doubt about it. We're living in. The but that's the other thing. Like, we're starving fucking kids in Afghanistan right now. All those women that we supposedly give a shit about. Line. We're literally starving them. We're starving them in Afghanistan currently as we have this conversation. There's an ongoing famine in Yemen with our guns and our laser uh, targeting systems being done by our allies. And you sit here and you say, oh, America has no power. There is no power. We can't do that. What the fuck? These are not false equivalencies. You just want to feel comfortable. We're starving Venezuela and Cuba right now just because they're communist too low. But they're not even, they're not even communist. It's crazy to me, man. It's crazy. It's crazy that any American sits here and fucking tries to use this as an opportunity to, to try to like hand wave away America's crimes or claim that this is whataboutism. When I have spent every fucking waking moment talking about Russia's war crimes, Russia's unjustifiable actions for the past fucking two weeks, okay, since the invasion began. And it's wild to me that a, a, a fucking brief moment where we talk about America's like insane amount of global power and goodwill that it's created or forcibly created for itself being used towards diplomacy when it's not being used towards diplomacy. And if uh, America bears a little bit of the share of responsibility in that circumstance, knowing full well that they were never going to allow Ukraine to be, join NATO, but never openly admitting that reality for God knows what reason, I wonder, or, uh, or, or you know, numerous other things like that, not trying to enforce a, a Minsk-style neutralization agreement that would have you know, hurt Ukrainians' uh, feelings in that situation and deny them their sovereignty, certainly. But I think that is still ultimately better than, than, than us using them like a fucking cum rag, okay? Because they have a genuine interest in uh, purging the Russian invader forces. Like, we're literally just fucking, we're, we're fleshlighting Ukraine like we did in Afghanistan, like the Mujahideen. You know who survives? You know who fucking suffers in that situation? Regular citizens, regular civilians, sick and tired of fucking hearing so many mothers cry about their children dying and, and, you know, people fucking forced to leave their homes and bombs exploding over their fucking heads. Right now in Mariupol, there are dead bodies on the fucking street. The Ukrainian authorities are telling people to literally fucking just bind their hands and arms and put a tarp over it and leave your fucking dead relatives there. And we'll maybe be able to clear, we, we'll maybe be able to clear those bodies inevitably. You think that's good? You think that's justifiable? It's happening because Russia is invading Ukraine, certainly. But any kind of way to get the fuck out of the situation needs to be exhausted. But it doesn't matter because a lot of you do not fucking care. You don't care about that brutality. You're bricked up for fucking war. Some, some people, maybe not in this chat, but in most places, 
feel like this is a good opportunity for America to be like, yeah, we're doing good work here. We're doing good work. Any moment that we're not giving guns and instead working towards diplomacy, working towards negotiating against this madman, this fucking violent madman, certainly, is a moment that another Ukrainian is dying for no fucking reason. And perhaps, despite what our, uh, despite what our foreign policy interests are in literally using Ukraine as a, as a fucking, you know, uh, as a fleshlight, basically, or using Ukraine as a weapon against, like, weakening Russia and using Ukrainian bodies for that reason, no matter what our State Department's interests are in that situation, the only thing that could potentially change the public outcome on this is if the media was doing its fucking job. But of course it's not. And even then it probably wouldn't change anything. But, the, but it doesn't hurt to try. It doesn't hurt to try and, 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 I don't know, change public attitude. But no, they won't do it. That's why they're like hyping up the fucking no-fly zone attitudes. It's worked in Libya. Maybe it'll work in Ukraine. Of course not. Of course it's not going to work in Ukraine. Because you're fighting not against Libya, a weakened fucking state, but against a fucking global power, a, a, a territorial superpower. I'm not naive about Putin. Even if he's a fucking bloodthirsty maniac who wants to genocide Ukrainians, there is no reason not to fucking try and, and, and uh, find a diplomatic solution and exhaust that diplomatic solution because the alternative is what? It's what? Do you think there's, a, there's an opportunity here where, like, uh, you know, Putin just, like, uh, you know, gets his shit pushed in, goes home, fuck it. You know, I'm going to put my toys, I'm going to put my toys back in the fucking trunk and get out of here. Poggers. Do you think he brought the, the, uh, the, the Iskander uh, missile defense, uh, missile launching platforms for funsies? Or do you think he's going to use them in Ukraine the moment that he's like, all right, fuck this. We've, uh, we've taken too many fucking casualties. I'm done. What do you think happens when those platforms launch? Not just fucking, uh, you know, what, what do you think happens when those platforms launch something that America has launched before as well? Like a little baby nuke, maybe. Just to, just to do a show of force. Just to demonstrate exactly how powerful Russia can be if they want to be. Ukraine is more of a condom than a fleshlight. True, that, that is what's going on. How are we responsible for Putin invaded? No, Putin still bears the brunt of the lion's share of the responsibility. The lion's share of the responsibility. Of course, make no mistake, you have to feel, the only reason why you can feel this way, I think, the only way you can arrive at the conclusion other than what I'm saying, being like uh, that Putin is still fucking ultimately responsible, is if you think like America has to be good here, like America has to be good. I think that's like the main difference in opinion here. In times of catastrophic crisis where... The you say those words but your overall coverage gives off sussy vibes? I don't care. I don't care to fucking make your fifis uh, feel better about, like, American hegemonic power, okay? It's so stupid. Like, I, I, I'm not going to fucking bend over backwards for your interests so you feel uh, more comfortable. The lives of innocent civilians are sacrificed in the wars of their masters. Yes, in Ukraine, but not only. Since the last plenary, tens of thousands of Afghani citizens had been forced to flee in search of food and safety. Five million children face famine, an agonizing and painful death, a 500% increase in child marriages and children being sold just so they can survive, and not a mention of it. Not here, not anywhere. No wall-to-wall -wall TV coverage, no, no emergency humanitarian response, Trump. no special plenaries, not even a mention in this plenary, no Afghani delegations and no statements. My God, they must be wondering what makes their humanitarian crisis so not unimportant? Backwards. Is it the color of their skin? Is it that yes. they're not white? They're not European? Yes. That yes. their problems come from a U.S. gun yes. or a U.S. invasion? Is it that the decision to rob their country's wealth was taken by a despotic yes. U.S. president rather than a Russian yeah. one? Because, my God, all wars are evil and all victims deserve support. And until we get on that page... And the fucking dumbasses will turn around and be like, she's doing all lives matter here, sweaty. She's doing, like, the disgustingness in which I've seen fucking actual, like, literally, like, fucking anarcho-communists or whatever. Like, people with black flags on their fucking Twitter bios. Oh, my Lord. 
the amount of people that I've heard say like, this is an all lives matter take. You're trying to all lives matter. Hey, dumbass, all lives matter is an unjustifiable and bullshit position because the people that are pushing for all lives matter are not actually hurt in any situation. They're just using it as a deflection. They're using that as a way to deflect the conversation away. This is ongoing shit. If white people were being fucking brutally murdered at a disproportionate rate by the police and we were only talking about fucking black lives, then yes, there would be a point to all lives matter or white lives matter. But that's not going on. Notice how I said disproportionately. We need it's wild. For the top it's of the fucking wild. Like. U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan, but it's our sure. But it's our sure. This is all our fault. What happens after we left? Of course, it's our fault. Of course it's our fault. And we're continuing to starve Afghan people. The Afghan people. What the fuck do you mean? Age, we have no credibility whatsoever. There's no The issue is Westerners aren't even saying all lives matter. They're only saying only the Ukrainian lives matter because when the fuck have they ever cared about the plight of brown people in the Middle East? Bro, they wouldn't even give a shit about Ukrainians either if they if the media wasn't fucking constantly talking about how Zelensky is daddy. Let's be fucking real. And they'll feel very angry and they'll feel righteous indignation. But that's it. They don't even care about the Ukrainians either. It's not like they give a fuck. Like, let's be real. You think they give a fuck about Ukrainians? Get the fuck out of here.